Well, welcome back to Monster Lab. You know, ever since Mike put that supercharger on the elevator, it's been a little sketchy. Anyway, this is part three of how to make a monster mask, and this is where it gets exciting. Okay, so I have painstakingly picked all the clay out of the mold, leaving a negative cavity of the original sculpture. Into this, we're gonna pour liquid latex. So for this section, you'll need liquid latex, scissors, and talc. Now, the latex you pick is very important. It needs to be mass-making latex. They sometimes call it casting latex, um, but it's not the kind of latex you use to make molds of. It's not the kind of latex you use to put on your face. It's the kind of latex that you pour into a mold to make a mask. So you'll have to look around, see what's available in your area, and uh, you can order this stuff online and whatever you need to do. And that's the kind of latex we want to use. So we're going to pour the liquid latex into the mold. Now, if you don't have enough latex to fill the mold completely, you can slosh it around, but it's better if you can fill it all the way to the top and just let it sit. And you need to leave something like this, maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, to build up enough thickness. But the longer it sits in the mold, the thicker the latex will be. And after it's sat long enough, then you dump it out and you're ready to uh, let it dry. So we're gonna fill the mold. And I would fill in one spot and, and just let it flow. Okay, we'll leave that set for about 45 minutes and I'll be back. Finally, now we need to dump the extra latex out because you'll want to save that. It's worth a lot of money. So just get a five gallon bucket or something and it works very well to pour into and then drain on. He's pouring the liquid latex out of the mold. Okay. Now let it sit like that upside down for maybe five, 10 minutes so that it all drains out, and then we'll put it in front of a pan. Stand by. It's time. You can just put this out in open air, and it will dry all by itself, but you can speed it up. Get a fan or a hair dryer on low. Never try to cook the latex. That's one of my pet peeves. People are always trying to cook latex. It's just a little bit of heat helps accelerate the drying process. So lean it up like that and turn the fan on. And when it's dry, we'll be back. All right, we're ready. Now, after the long wait, you're ready to talc the mold. Now, you can use talc like baby talc, but make sure you get unscented because you don't want to smell like a new baby butt. Um, however, here's a little trick that we use. Just use the plaster in its powder form that you use to make the mold. It works great. 
So we put a little of this in. Make sure you get it a little bit like in the, in the antenna and ears, things like that. You don't need much, but then you need to blow it around a little bit. That just gets it spread around because the latex will stick to itself if you don't talc it before you pull it out. Now, are you ready to see the monster? And there he is, your monster. Ready to be taken to your leader, which he's not alive yet, but he will be soon. You'll see. So, one more thing we have to do before we paint. That is, cut the mask. Now, if your scissors have blood on them, it may mean something, doesn't mean much around here. Just cut around the edge first. And you can pull with a little bit of tension and that'll help your scissors cut. Uh, some people use razor blades, that's fine. Um, we use it sometimes a lot on, on uh, foam pieces, but uh, on latex pieces like this, we usually just cut them. Now, here's a little trick. You fold the mask inside out and you get things like the eyes, the ears, uh, the nose, the mouth, and we're gonna cut these from the inside of the mask and it just makes for a cleaner cut and a lot easier. But be careful to not cut in your eye. We're gonna cut right here. This is our eye hole above the eye. Uh, we're gonna cut his nose holes out. Just, you wanna get as much ventilation as you can because, boy, it gets, it gets to be a drag if you can't breathe well and I don't know if it's very healthy if you can't breathe. All right. The mouth, let's see, where was that mouth hole? I'll probably do that. All right, so we've got the ears, the nose, the eyes, and the mouth. You fold it back, and you have some very nice, clean, professional holes and uh, those will allow you to breathe. So, we're gonna take these up and we're gonna start painting. I'm gonna show two different painting techniques and, um, well, it's gonna be magic. See you there. All right, for this one, we're gonna paint in blue this time and we're gonna enter the world of compressed air. So we're gonna use a quartz sprayer. Now, I'm gonna take this quartz sprayer. This is gonna happen very fast, but I'm gonna spray up and catch the details then I'm going to spray down. Now you can do this all with an airbrush. It'll just take a little longer, but you know, if you're just doing one mask, who cares? Then I'm going to go in an airbrush and I'm just going to do the teeth and some other areas. Now, um, when you get into a color like blue, flesh isn't as important. You might want to preserve some white areas so that the colors pop later on, which we'll be adding uh, some translucence and things later. So I'm going to put on these two colors and that'll be it for this mask. Okay, next we're going to do the blue alien. Now I'm going to start this with a blue rub out. So it's um, about, you know, one of those quarts of 70% uh, uh, rubbing alcohol with maybe two ounces of process blue FW. So we're going to get that on first.
Next, I'm going to put on black FW ink, and that's mixed half and half with 70% rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to put it in some of the detail areas, like the mouth, because you wouldn't have blue between the teeth and things like that. And it just accents the areas. Now we're going to rub it out and, um, and he'll start to come to life. Again, this is 70% rubbing alcohol. You squeeze the sponge thoroughly and start cleaning off the, uh, the stuff on the high parts. All right, we'll let this dry for just a minute and start speckling. Okay, first we're gonna start with some subtle gray speckling. Now the ink is very diluted. There's maybe a half an ounce per uh, quart, but you don't have to mix up a quart. You can just mix a, mix a little dish and test it. And you want a translucent, subtle effect. Now we're going to do white. Next we're going to do blue translucent, again 50% rubbing alcohol, 50% FW. I'm going to come in, hit some of the shadow areas.
Next is Purple Lake. Again, 50-50, rubbing alcohol and FW Purple Lake. And um, I really like where the Purple Lake and the blue intersect. It just makes a beautiful deep purple. Next is off-white FW ink, not thinned by anything, just pure ink. Now it's black FW ink. Notice how you can change the personality by just where you place the iris. So um, this one's a little more aggressive. All right. Next up is the green of the eyes. Now one of the advantages of airbrush is everything's more subtle and natural and blends well and it's quicker. veins. Now because his eyes are low, the veins are coming from the top.
Next, we're gonna do hair. Now, hair is something, you can cut up a wig, you could go to beauty supply places and they have this really nice braid that comes in all sorts of colors. Um, and uh, I had some goat hair or yak hair, and so I'm gonna use that. Now, this guy I'm gonna put white hair on, and it's a little weird to put hair on an alien, but we're gonna do it anyway. First step is to put on silicone, and we're gonna build this up in rows, a few rows. Now I'm gonna take this uh, painting stir stick and just squeeze that hair right in the silicone. And if you get that hair soaked all the way through, it is going to be tough. It will not come out. You'll lose, you always lose a little when you first um, comb it. But uh, yeah, it's really tough. All right, now we're gonna finish off. He's got a little bit of a bad haircut. We're gonna give him a trim here in a minute, but um, we're gonna gloss the teeth and the antennas and wounds a little bit with the uh, Liquitex. And now the epoxy. I almost forgot something that's really cool. This is called zombie eyes. Now, once you finish the eye, then you can go and overhaze. Now this is uh, off-white FW ink with quite a bit of rubbing alcohol. Maybe it's a three to one or four to one ratio, but here's what that does. You talk about some creepy zombie eyes, that's it. Now we gloss them. This is, uh, Five minute epoxy, DevCon, and uh, boy, it just brings stuff to life. He's just short of a haircut of taking over the planet. Here we go. You know, it'd be hard to take over a planet with a bad.